through when the growth look good on you best believe they wanna screw now i've been trying to climb devil threw me in the dark baby don't be insecure you can still go make a mark like Blow. could never let them drain my soul now Blow. table turning like door knobs wow Blow. i think i'm about to set sail i'm a walking living legend walking with my chest yeah. now life keep dealing me cards i keep what is going on, people? It's G, and we are back in the building. Yes, we're here with our match reaction: Liverpool versus Brighton. Um, big game, big game. Obviously, not as big as the game that we saw straight after the Liverpool game, the Manchester City versus Arsenal. Um, that's probably billed as the biggest game of the season by some people, but. Of course, Liverpool still had to go out there and do their business. Um, playing at home to Brighton, you know, after the international break, with all the stuff, as I mentioned in my preview, with all the things that we that I spoke about in regards to, like, you know, Roberto De Zerbi, you know, this being kind of his audition. Um, I guess one of the first questions I would ask everybody, and, you know, actually, before we even get into that, guys, make sure you smash the like, make sure you share and subscribe to the channel. Um, but, you know... <laughs> Talking about that, it's one of the things that I spoke about prior to the game, you know, was, you know, Roberto De Zerbi. Everyone, you know, most people will probably know by now that De Zerbi is probably my choice, um, you know, uh, in terms of new Liverpool manager coming in. I know we've got the Amarim fans and, you know, if he comes in and he does well, fantastic for him. But, you know, just in terms of the style of football, um, just in terms of, you know, the man himself, um, the way his teams play, that's so key for me moving forward um and I also don't, I feel like he'd actually be a likable character he seems like someone who really will fight for his team uh, and he could he calls it how he sees it to be honest with you he isn't really someone who minces his words now that can obviously be a bad thing depending on the type of ownership that you've got and stuff like that but for me you know I, I like it I like it I always have um so you know people like I said it's the Roberto De Zerbi audition. Do I think he goes through to the next stage of the audition? 100%. Now, this fixture, regardless of the result, like I said before, you know, the game, you know, my agenda's got to agenda regardless. So, <clears throat> whether Liverpool won 6-0 or, you know, we lost, whatever, either way, I was still always going to look at it and say, no, nah, I definitely feel, you know, watching Brighton over the last two seasons with Roberto De Zerbi in charge and seeing the way that Brighton play, seeing the reason why they give top teams such a tough game. To the, and again, you know, this game at the weekend, another tough game for Liverpool. Now, obviously, you know, speaking about the game in general, of course, Liverpool ended up winning the game 2-1. Wasn't a comfortable game, in my personal opinion. Um, you know, even the way that Brighton kind of set up in that kind of 4-2-3-1 system, you know, trying to, they were smart in certain things that they did. And again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep going, oh yeah, that's just deserving. That's just deserving. Sometimes the players just have to go out there and do what they need to do. I also didn't feel that Liverpool played poorly or anything like that. Um, in my opinion, we did probably deserve to get the victory. Um, in the end but it should have been more comfortable but and of course we'll get into we'll get into all of that in a second but when we're looking at the way that Brighton kind of set up against Liverpool what, one of the reasons why I said they were so clever is what they were doing was you know one of the main things that we always see is that Virgil van Dijk when he gets on the ball we know how much of a great passer he is do you know what I mean and he's got that one ball that he always does it's the same ball every single time out to Mo Salah and then whatever happens, obviously, from there, what they were trying to do is make sure that he cannot always have that pass on. Obviously, there's going to be, t there's, it's probably going to happen more often than not. But if you can minimize the amount of times that it actually happens in games, then you don't always, in your head anyway, you think, OK, if that doesn't happen all the time, then that second ball that, you know, potentially the knockdown or if Mo Salah passes it back and he cuts inside and they've got a double now on that side of the pitch. Now it's not so crazy. That's obviously where then Mac 10 obviously comes into play. And we'll talk about his performance in a second. But they were smart enough to make sure they always close down Virgil, which teams don't do. That's something I've always wondered as well. I just used to think, why don't you close him down? He's not good at dribbling. Um, obviously, he's a big guy. He's strong. You know what I mean? So he probably could bulldoze his way through if he wanted to. But in terms of actually close ball control and things like that, I don't think Virgil's actually really that good um, when it comes to that side of his game. And that's not his game anyway. But Kwanzaa is. And they used to always leave... 
they were leaving Kwanzaa free quite a bit in the game. Now, I get it to a certain degree because they probably think, okay, if Kwanzaa, the, the way I saw it anyway, if Kwanzaa's got the ball, he's more than likely going to dribble because he is actually pretty decent at dribbling. If he dribbles and we can win the ball back, they've got a man down in defence, whereas Van Dijk isn't going to venture forward. So you don't lose that man. And with again, with Conor Bradley, Joe Gomez kind of pushing up and inverting and doing whatever it is that they do, they're looking at probably thinking we probably have more of a chance now on the counter attack because they're going to be a centre back down, which then potentially means their back line is going to be all reshaped and things like that, which I thought at the time was pretty smart, to be honest with you, Roberto De Zerbi. Um, but you know, it, it's just, it was just one of those kind of things, and I noticed that quite a lot in the game. And <clears throat> you know, I felt like that's the reason why you know McAllister who I'll say it from now before I even get into my ratings, he was my man of the match, you know, absolutely ran, you know, ran the show in that middle of the park. I think I'll keep saying it week after week if I have to play players in their positions and you will see the best results. Playing him in that six and doing all that, obviously, maybe he just had to wait for Endo to obviously get up to speed and I get all of that, of course. Now we've seen, we're, 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 we're bearing the fruit of that at this current moment in time, 100%, but ultimately you can see a clear difference between what he was like in the six and what he was like in the eight. You know, we keep doing the the thing of, oh yeah, but he was doing a job and I'm not, he did a job. He, 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 he actually did a job. Was the job adequate enough for me? No, not really, if I'm being totally honest with you. Like if I knew that he was gonna be the the long standing six in that position, I, I definitely wouldn't be happy and I'll be on the I'll be the first one to say, nah, we definitely need to get in someone new. If Endo obviously of course wasn't gonna be up to scratch or wasn't gonna be good enough, which he obviously kinda showed at the beginning of his reign, you know, at Liverpool. But in this eight position, his natural position, we are seeing all of the things that he was doing at Brighton. Everything he's doing now, he was doing at Brighton. Not that these are all things we've seen. That's why, you know, the world class shouts and stuff like that, I think it's very, very premature. Um, uh, I think we're, we're so quick to, and this isn't to be disingenuous to McAllister, but I think we're so quick to, you know, call someone world class after like months of form. You know, we need to see these people kind of do this consistently at this kind of level. Hence the reason why the Van Dykes, the Allisons, the Mo Salas, you know, the Harlands, the KDBs, the Mbappes, the Vinicius, all these kind of players, they're world class because they can do this consistently year in, year out at the top level. At the moment, that remains to be seen, you know, um, with McAllister. But right now, and especially in this game against Brighton, this brother, he was on it, man. He was on it. I mentioned the other day about, imagine if you had a midfield which consisted of a new DM, whoever that DM might be, whatever DM you want to pick, and McAllister and Paqueta, or Paqueta, however you want to pronounce it. I think that that midfield would be crazy. Obviously, that DM would have to be really on it, like a Kante type of level DM almost in terms of what he can do. But imagine having those two, because in, pa in Paqueta, you've got someone who can still do the grit side of things, but is fantastic at releasing that ball and is good at playing in tight spaces, comfortable in and out of possession, can still do the doggy work. McAllister, he does the doggy work, but just, just not all of that, not all that, if I'm being you know 100% honest, but he's so good on the ball. Like on the ball, McAllister is a really, really good player and he showcased all of that. You know, Brighton taking an early lead inside the second minute of the game. You know, obviously that's just, to me. I just, I just saw it as they were quicker to everything. Um, they had, whatever their setup was in terms of how they set up, they were really fast and just it was just plain sailing for them. Whereas for us, it's like as per usual, typical Liverpool at this stage. It's not even about it being unsustainable. It's just more about it being annoying and inevitable. You know that Liverpool always going to concede, give or take. You, you know what I mean? A half decent team. You know, Liverpool are going to concede goals. It's just the way that we play. It's just the way that we are. That was more down to mistakes, players out of position, ricochets here and there. And, of course, topped off with a fantastic finish from Danny Welbeck. So, you know, all of these kind of little variances kind of thing comes into play. Now, even after that goal, of course, Luis Diaz then scores. And the Mosella, of course, scores, you know, in that second half to kind of, you know, win us the game. But... <laughs> Looking at the game as a whole, when I think about it, we obviously we we would we dominated. We, you know, we we did dominate the game. You know, we had what was it, thirty shots at goal. You know, eight shots on target. Brighton only had three shots on target in the game. We only missed two big chances. Passing was kind of fairly similar. We had eighty nine percent. They had eighty six percent. 
Um, we committed a lot more fouls. And again, these are the kind of things. This is why I would like when people talk about styles of play and things like that, I'm always like, Eesh, yeah, I'm not comfortable with my style of play when I watch it. I don't watch it and, and be and I'm not comfortable with the way that Liverpool play. The inevitability comes in the players that they've got, not the style of play. It's the players that they've got. That's why you'll be like, oh, yeah, Liverpool are inevitable. They eventually score. Not because, yeah, because they can do this and they can... No, it's not that. It's the players will end up doing something because you've got players like Mo Salas who needs 100 shots, <laughs> clearly, in games like this to be able to finish teams off and et cetera, et cetera. McAllister, when he's on form, he can do things like that. It's more that as opposed to the actual system system being the reason that's the way i see it anyway of course you guys can you guys can disagree <clears throat> all you want but that's just how i've seen it for a since eighteen nineteen season to be honest with you I, I don't think it's really changed that much in terms of system and we you know what, what we're trying to do but yeah in this game you know um McAllister, the reason one of the reasons why i felt like he was the best player on the park but but in t in terms of um for in regards to liverpool was because he brought a sense of control in that midfield where zabozala and endo didn't really have it second to the ball you know late to certain things as i mentioned before we conceded more fouls a lot more fouls than brighton did in the game why because brighton were a lot smarter in certain moments we were second to everything we were literally always second, always second, chasing shadows half the time. Why? Because they can bop the ball around. Let's not pretend like this isn't a team under a manager who can bop the ball around with the best teams in the league. In Europe, they can do that all day long. It's, it's not difficult for them. So, you know, it's, it's when people are watching that and, they, and you know, you want to come up with every excuse under the sun, it's not about that. That's what they, they can do that. That's, that's simple for them. That's their bread and butter. That's not our bread and butter. So when you've got a player like McAllister, who it was his bread and butter and he understands how to do it and he can do it himself, of course. Do you know what I mean? It puts us in better stead. And I just felt that was one of the main reasons, you know, why, you know, he he, uh, he was my man of the match anyway. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it was one of those things. We ended up winning the game regardless. Um, yeah. I, but yeah, like I, I was happy with that result. To be honest with you, I said I didn't want Brian to get slapped or not, and I didn't need that because then my my agenda can't agent. Um, but all jokes aside, it was a it was at times it was a basketball type of game, um, up and down and stuff like that. You know, at times it was controlled from both teams. It's not even that Brighton were even having a lot of chance. I mean, they had nine shots at goal and three on target. It's not even that they were having a lot of chances. It was it's all about that same thing that we talk about every single match week with Liverpool, about teams getting in dangerous areas too frequently. It's not about teams getting into dangerous areas. Every team is going to concede some chances, you know, in games and stuff like that. It's not about that. It's about how easy it is. The, the actual nuance of it actually happening not oh yeah because we can see that this many shots that's fine every team in the entire world Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, PSG, Arsenal, Manchester City, Liverpool all these top teams they all can see chances in games that's not the problem but you don't want the chance to be so easy you don't want it to be such an easy thing to do and at times I feel like with Liverpool it is quite easy to kind of get through us to be honest with you but you know that's neither here nor there um Let's get to my my um, player player ratings. Um, Keller in goal. Um, thought, yeah, he was just trying to remember. Nah, he couldn't do nothing for the goal. Outside of that, um, I felt like he was okay. So seven. Yeah. So, so can I give more? Yeah. Now nah, seven. I think seven's fine. Um, left back. Obviously, we had Joe Gomez in there. Um, yeah, I didn't feel like his inverting was doing too much. I felt like at times he was out of position. Um, as per usual, gets himself another yellow card. Um, six. So 6.5. I'll give him a... 6.5. I'll give Joe Gomez a 6.5. Um, right back, we obviously have Connor Bradley. <sighs> Difficult start to the game, boy. Like, you know when you know when you come up against. There's obviously different types of players who come up in in every walk of life in in in, in terms of the football sense. So you got 
guys who are just speed merchants you've got the tricky wingers who are not fast but they're super tricky and you don't want to let them get past you you've got guys who have a bit of air both you've got guys who are just super athletic um you know you've got so many different types and he came up against another different type of um uh, player in Adaringa um who I thought played well you know in the majority of the game definitely had Conor Bradley's number at the beginning of the game um, in my personal opinion, um, but Conor Bradley, he, Conor Bradley grew into the game um, as the game kind of wore on, started to get the ball into more dangerous areas, um, trying to affect play further up the field. Overall, I will give him, uh, I can't give him two, I got that, that first beginning was poor man, I'll give him a seven, I'll give him a seven. Um, two centre backs, uh, Virgil. Uh, Virgil actually, apparently, he, he for the first time, I think this season, he lost an aerial duel, <laughs> which is jokes to lose Dunk. So I'm not actually surprised by that because Dunk is a, is actually a beast in the air. To be honest with you, um, Virgil. Um, yeah, he was okay. He was okay in the game. I don't feel like he made well. I say he didn't make mistakes. Technically, it was his mistake actually that led to the goal. Because um, he got that last touch, um, silly clearance, uh, not really controlled, um, not really set in that kind of position. But I'm not going to blame him for it, but technically it was his fault. <laughs> um, seven. Uh, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa just like... Um, just like Bradley in that literally it's like it's like the same amount of time in that beginning of the game this guy was just looking him and Bradley together I'm not comfortable I haven't to be I've, I've, I've never ever been comfortable um, and I think I said this before in the Liverpool group chat when they play with when they're together on the pitch you notice that they're young G's you just know you just know okay these are the young ballers in the team you got me inexperienced don't really know certain things they, they, they'll do good stuff there's nothing it's not to say that they won't do the good stuff that we know that they're good for but you clearly can see the inexperience in their game in games like this when they're playing together and especially on the same side um so yeah for me 6.5 for Kwanzaa I thought it was okay um got better again as the game kind of went on but yeah not enough to me um midfield endo in the dm um Endo can get a Endo can get a seven. Thought he was quite quiet in this game, to be fair to you. Had a lot again, had bits, had moments in the game, a couple of nice uh, recoveries, tackles and that, but in general there was a period of time where I actually forgot he was even on the pitch until he made a tackle. Um he was getting bypassed, you know, the, the or the midfield was getting bypassed, so to speak, and the ball not being on their side or in his area. So yeah, I will say seven. Um, uh, McAllister, I will give a nine. Really, really dominant performance. We spoke about McAllister already. Um, fantastic performance, man. There's not really much more to say. Uh, Zabozalai, um, I felt he was good in spells, um, but overall six point five for me uh, for Zabozalai. Um. Still working his way up at some point in time, though. That like, obviously, it's kind of good that we've got this next game because I wouldn't start him in the next game. I, I think, like I, I said in my match preview, I feel like this brother needs to start touching the bench soon, and yeah, this might be the perfect time to do so. Um, up front, uh, Luis Diaz. Uh, he was a live wire. He was a live wire in the game. Um, obviously, Cause got his goal. Uh, another goal chalked off uh, for offside, rightly so. Uh, 7.5 uh, Nunez quiet you could argue he didn't really get that much service but he himself wasn't really creating much wasn't really doing much in my personal opinion um, 6 uh, Salah <laughs> Salah's a funny one man got, him, got himself a goal but if you're talking about overall performance I'll give him a 7 and to be honest, the performance really was a six. It's the goal that gets him the one extra, if I'm being honest with you. Um, yeah, I felt like defensively, and big up ends because he mentioned it on his call-in show, um, him and Savage, make sure you guys check it out. Uh, defensively, it's always down that side. And Ringer at the beginning of the game was having a free-for-all down that side. Him and Estupinon, they were just having fun down that side. 
Do you get what I'm saying? And I know we have this conversation about Salah all the time. And he's my guy. Everyone knows he's, he's my favourite player in the team. He's the only one I'll back it for. Everyone else, I'm like, well, you're fighting for yourselves. But sometimes, though, Salah, man, your performance is stinky, my brother. Like, you had how many in shots in the game? If I Let me even take a little look at how many shots that Mo Salah actually had in the game. Wasn't it like 10, 11 shots? That, you know, he's 12 shots he had in the game. Come on, bro. 12 shots on one goal. Come on, man. If that was Nunes, we'd be, myself included, I'd be all over that. All over that. So, and I can't, just because he scored a goal, that doesn't really, that doesn't really, um, you know, mask the poor performance, in my personal opinion, um, as an overall. Uh, yeah, so I'll give him a seven, uh, just based off of that. But yeah, guys, that is my ratings. It should be up on the screen right now for you guys to be able to see of course let me know what you think in the comment section below in terms of who your man of the match was i'm pretty sure everyone's got McAllister down as the man of the match anyway but i would love to hear just in case you've got you know someone else and um, the subs uh you know i never really care about these subs man uh elliot yeah he was calm gapo didn't really recognize um didn't really realize he was on the pitch and gravel Birch, the same thing um so yeah <clears throat> Javier yeah, was was okay actually to be fair when he came on, um yeah I thought he was all right uh, but yeah that's about it um but yeah like I said that is my um, player ratings let me know what you think in the comment section now we move on to our game against Sheffield United hopefully a bit more easier game maybe a couple players who are just coming back so like the Graven Birches potentially the Curtis Jones Ibu Kanates. All of these players, especially because we've got that Manchester United game coming up, so we're going to need everybody back fit and firing. So, yeah, hopefully with Liverpool now being top of the league, top of the league, um, which is really, really good. Um, of course, after that Arsenal versus Manchester City uh, draw. Um, so, yeah, you know, right now top of the league by two points. All games played the same. You know, we're ahead of Manchester City by three points as well. So, yeah, the, 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 it's not a gap. It's only one game technically. Do you know what I mean? So you lose your next game, and these guys win, then all of a sudden it starts becoming a bit problematic. But ultimately, we're building something. Do you know what I mean? With these last nine games to go, so let's hope for the best. Let's see what happens um, with Liverpool. What you think in the comment section below? I'm G, and guess what, man? We outie.